Now, we have other people that, of course, have been utilizing, of course, plate and frame heat exchangers are made of stainless steel, usually 304 stainless or it could be 316 stainless, more resistant to chloride, or it could be titanium, which of course is, is uh, much more expensive, but on the other hand, it's, it's very, very effective against uh, uh, biological corrosion as well as uh, uh, any chloride attack. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we have a 304 stainless plate and frame heat exchanger, and uh, we have seen uh, that periodically that bundle is stagnant, uh, particularly if it's, uh, it's operating periodically or it's a standby bundle. Uh, and you can get bacterial growth internally, that the bacterial growth, uh, like sulfate-reducing bacteria, though I like to really call it sulfide-producing bacteria, because they are producing hydrogen sulfide, that's rotten egg odor, and it's going to attack and break down the, the uh, protective oxide film of stainless steel, causing pits and, of course, uh, eventual failure. You need to add a good biocide to control these bacteria. Uh, some people actually eliminate the, the stagnant water or rinse that particular plate free meat exchanger uh, once you bring, you bring it down. I like to rinse it with at least a 10% solution of hydrogen peroxide because that will assure two things. One, it will assure killing the bacteria that you've got present if there's any there, and two, it will, it will actually help form the oxide film that stainless steel maintains as protection. So keep that in mind. Here's an example of a small stainless steel plate, feeding, plate frame heat exchanger. Uh, these are very, very, very commonly used, particularly when you're dealing with cooling tower water, going to a closed loop system, chill water, and uh, frequently uh, some people use them, of course, for process operations as well. Here's an example of uh, a pitting attack on stainless steel tubing. Uh, this particular attack has occurred in a matter of uh, 72 hours or a little bit longer, uh, and uh, that particular attack was due to sulfate-reducing bacteria. So keep in mind that the sulfate-reducing bacteria and high chlorides can cause serious pitting attack on stainless steel. 